Space Buds, Miss Fontaine here again, and today we're going to be doing pretzels with cheese sauce. So pretzels are a yeast bread, so I'm going to start off with one and a half cups of water, and I want it to be between 100 and 110 degrees. Again, when I'm taking temps of the water, I want to make sure that my metal stem thermometer is submerged at least halfway into whatever it is I'm taking the temperature of. And if I need to, you know, you fill it up to two or three cups, whatever size container you have, and then you can always pour out what it is you don't need. But then this way, you know, you're getting it the correct temperature. If I only have just a little bit of my thermometer in here, it's never going to read a hot enough temperature for me. So I'm going to put that right in my mixing bowl. And to that, I'm going to add one packet of yeast. But again, I buy my yeast in bulk. So one packet of yeast is equal to two and a quarter teaspoons or 0.25 of an ounce. So there's two teaspoons and a quarter. And then I'm going to give this a little bit of a whisk just to get that yeast in there and get it nice and activated, blooming, so that it'll give us a good rise. So I'll let that sit for a minute. I'm going to start getting together some of my other things. I need one tablespoon of butter that's melted. I need a teaspoon of salt. And I'm just going to put these all in the same ramekin, save myself a couple of dishes. But I don't want to add it to my yeast water quite yet. And then I need a tablespoon of brown sugar. That's kind of one of your big differences with a pretzel is a lot of pretzel recipes have brown sugar in them. Give you just that little bit of different kind of sweetness, but it gives you a nice little color for your pretzels. And I'm gonna kind of mix this all in together, kind of make a little paste here. Again, when you're melting your butter, make sure you're not putting boiling hot butter into your pan like this butter has been melted but then it was just kind of sitting on the stove top for a little bit and then i need some flour so i need about three and three quarters to four cups of flour and i'm going to add them about a cup at a time so i'm going to go ahead this yeast is looking pretty good here going to add the butter, brown sugar, and salt mixture in there. Make sure you get everything out of your ramekin. You definitely want to have that butter melted though. Don't try to just put softened butter in. Definitely make sure the butter is melted. And then we're going to start with one cup of our flour. I'm using a dough hook. You can mix this by hand if you don't have a mixer with a dough hook. It's just going to, you know, build a few more muscles, help make you buyer strong for the weight room. And then as this gets incorporated, I'm going to add my next cup of flour. And then once that's incorporated, I add the next cup of flour. And just continue doing that until you have all of the flour added in. So I've got my first cup of flour. It's pretty incorporated. I'm going to go ahead and add my second cup of flour. And you can go like a one or a two, kind of your lowest speeds. I'm also going to start preparing some other things for this. So reading through my recipe, I need um, nine cups of water and half a cup of baking soda. Yes, that's a lot of baking soda. But please make sure you measure out your nine cups of water. It's only, I don't know, my pan's maybe a third of the way full. But the baking soda, it has alkalinity to it. And that's what's going to kind of, we're going to boil these pretzels for just a quick um, minute or two in here. But we want all the alkalinity of this. It does fizz up a little bit if your water's already boiling, which mine was. And then uh, we're going to add our other cup of flour. I've also got my oven preheated 
to 400 degrees. And I have two baking sheets that are lined with parchment paper or a silicone mat. Super important, make sure your sheets are lined with parchment paper if you have it, or silicone baking mats work great, but you need to make sure your parchment, your baking sheets are lined. All right, I'm gonna add that last bit of flour in here. Start with about three quarters of a cup. And then once this is done, we're going to start rolling out. We're gonna knead our dough for a couple of minutes. This dough you wanna be just, just a little bit sticky because you're gonna to need to roll these out into ropes and twist them to a pretzel. And when you twist them, you want them to stick together just a little bit. If there's too much flour and it doesn't stick at all, it's gonna be really hard to get the pretzels in the shape you want. But you don't want it too sticky that it's like sticking all over the place and sticking to your fingers. Like you want just that little bit of kind of resistance in a way. So that's why that three and three quarter to four cups of flour. So I've got about three and three quarter in there right now. And I think that's gonna be just about enough for us. Turn the mixer up so that it'll start pulling some of the dough off of the sides. Getting everything kind of mixed in together really well. You can see it kind of gets a little shiny again, which kind of tells you it's getting a little sticky. And notice it kind of changed throughout this mixing process. So that's looking, it's looking just about right to me. I am kind of test when I pull the dough hook off a little bit got on there, but that comes off real easy. So I'm gonna just flour a surface here real lightly. Again, I'm not really trying to put any flour into this. And I'm gonna get this in hot soapy water right away because otherwise it's not gonna be very fun to clean. I'm gonna knead my dough. Right now I can feel little lumps in it, which is perfectly okay. You should feel some lumps in it. Um, I've got just about the right amount of stickiness to it, but I'm gonna knead it until I don't feel these lumps anymore. And again, to knead dough, you're kind of pushing with your palm, and then I fold that up over, kind of rotate it, and then push again. So it's kind of that same motion kind of over and over. And if it starts to stick, just add a little flour, but you should have, like it, it holds to my hand for just a split second, um, so this is just about the perfect amount of stickiness for this. As you're kneading it, it might start to get a little bit stickier. And if that's the case, it starts sticking to your hand or sticking to the table and leaving chunks behind, you can add more flour. But when it says to knead for three minutes, it's being serious. Like it's an arm workout. Again, we're going to get buyer strong here doing all these, all this bread kneading, which, you know, you probably need to because if you're eating it, you're going to have to hit the weight room too. But so need this three minutes should be smooth. You shouldn't feel any lumps in it anymore. And then we're just going to let this sit. And unlike other uh, yeast breads or doughs, this one, we're only going to let sit for like 10 minutes just to kind of give it a chance to relax. Uh, where a lot of your other breads, you're going to let rise until double, and that's not the case with the pretzels. We're just kind of going to let them sit just for a couple, for, you know, that 10 minutes. So I'm going to keep kneading this for my three minutes, and then I'm going to let it sit under, I'm just going to use a towel, and I'll cover it, and in 10 minutes, we'll be ready to start rolling pretzels. All right, so my dough has rested about 10 minutes here, and I'm going to get 12 pretzels out of this dough. So you could kind of flatten it out and then with a bench knife, cut it into 12s and that works, but I kind of have some OCD issues and I like all my pretzels being the same size. So I use a scale and I weigh my dough and this dough is 33 ounces. So then I take 33 and divide it by 12 and I get 2.75. So what I'm going to do is using my bench knife, I just cut a section off and weigh it and that's a little too much. So a little bit off. Two, nine, 
a little less. There we go. And then I just kind of roll that into a ball. And I'm going to repeat that with all of this until I get 12, 2.75 ounce pretzel balls. All right, so all my dough has been measured, so I've got them nice and even. I'm gonna cover these while I'm not using them, so I don't want them to dry out and get a crust on them because that's not good. Now the fun part, actually roll in your pretzel. So I was saying that you want your dough just a little bit sticky. This is, it's like just about perfect. It really doesn't stick to a whole lot, but I'm gonna roll and I wanna get these about 20 to 22 inches. And I'm kind of starting in the middle. My hands are like this and I'm kind of like rolling and pushing the dough out. And this is really elastic dough. So it shrinks right back up. So you think you have it long enough and then you realize, nope, not all the way. And you're gonna get some thicker and thinner spots and just kind of try like your thicker spots. You just kind of push the dough out a little bit more and your thinner spots, you don't push as hard. So it's a lot of kind of consistently changing your pressures so that um, your dough gets to be the thickness that you want and consistent all the way across. So I'm rolling, but also kind of stretching at the same time. And if your dough has too much flour, it's just gonna slide, it's not really going to roll. And if that's the case, you might have to do like this technique in your hands if you have a little too much flour. So I'm right here about 22-ish inches. And then to roll your pretzel, head out of the way here, you're basically gonna take your pretzel and cross it over like this. And I'm gonna flip it once. And then I'm gonna take it, fold it over, and I can pull those however you want. And I'm gonna put this, and I'm kind of pressing, pressing that part down. And this is gonna go on my baking sheet that I have lined with parchment paper. And I'm going to do this with, I can get about six on each of my baking sheets. So I'm gonna keep doing this until I have six of them, and then we're gonna put them in that baking soda bath that we made a little while ago. All right, so I have my baking soda water. It's gonna come up to a boil here real quick. Slide this over so you can see. And then I also have some coarse sea salt. Um, any, if you had kosher or iodized, that would be fine too, but you definitely kind of want it coarse because if you think about like pretzels and stuff that you get, um, that's always like, it's got those chunky pieces of salt. And so those are just coarse pieces of salt. Um, I've got my baking soda bath here. So I have that nine cups of water and half a cup of baking soda. And we're going to bring this up to a gentle boil. And it should go pretty quick. So I'm gonna take, I got a little bit of a simmer going here. I'm gonna take my pretzels that I've folded. I'm gonna put probably two of them in here is about all I can kind of fit at once. And they're only gonna be in here like 20 to 30 seconds. And you're gonna wanna have like some kind of slotted spoon, or I like using one of these because pretzels are flat too but they're gonna be in here about 20, 30 seconds. And try not, don't wanna crowd this. So typically I'll have my whole pan of pretzels ready to go and I'll get all six of them at once and then in the oven they go. And as soon as they, like they'll start to float a little bit, you can see I've got one starting to float. That kind of tells me it's good. I'm not trying to cook these. We're just kind of trying to change the pH level of them. That's not good, I got flipped over. When you get these back on your pan, make them look the way you want them to look when they're done. Because this is how they're going to go in the oven. And then you can liberally sprinkle them with some coarse sea salt. And then those are gonna go in the oven for 12 to 15 minutes.
until they're golden brown and they should look, they're going to puff up and this is what you should get for your finished product. And then you can make cheese sauce. So just like your mac and cheese that we've made in the past, just make a simple roux, make a basic white sauce, add some cheese, you add a little bit of cayenne pepper to it to give you that spicy cheese sauce. There is a cheese sauce recipe included with your assignment. Feel free to make it, but it is optional. All right, enjoy those pretzel spuds. Have a great day.